Filling a gas-powered car is very simple, and the vast majority of Americans have been doing it for years. You pay using a credit card or cash, you push a button or two, stick a standardized nozzle into the filler, and well, off you go. Now in theory, charging an EV is even simpler. Plug in the car and, well, wait a while. If you live somewhere with regular access to 240 volt power, it is possible to recharge in just a matter of hours. But the reality is most people don't have high voltage power in their garage. And furthermore, charging off a standard 120 volt outlet can take several days. While installing these 240 volt plugs is getting more and more affordable, home charging is usually not feasible for those who live in apartment complexes or don't have a garage. So if you fall into this boat, how do you keep your car charged? Well, in the year 2019, charging stations seem to be popping up more frequently than update notifications on an iPhone. So with a swipe of the credit card and a standardized recharge plug, charging on the go should be simple, right? Well, you see, not quite. This is called a charge point, and here in our city of Boulder, Colorado, it is by far the most popular company that supplies these charging stations for public use. And let me show you quickly how it works. So there's an app on your phone, you open it up, and there are literally hundreds in the Denver metro area. And if you zoom in, there's gotta be 20, 30, 40 just here in Boulder, Colorado. So the way it works is, you click one of the charge stations, you can open it up in Google Maps, and it takes you here. But it's even cooler than that because if I zoom in, I can actually click on the station itself and see if it's available. So this one has two stations. It says they're both available, which they are. And it says it'll charge at five kilowatts or about 15 miles an hour. So to start charging, it's just a matter of swiping your credit card, right? Unfortunately, no. There are dozens of companies who produce these chargers, but each one has their own account, their own payment method, and their own app. It's like if Sinclair, Shell, and Maverick made you sign up to their station before you could refill your tank. So here is how the charge point works. I have my credit card information plugged into my phone, and it actually uses, in my case, Apple Pay to get the charger going. Now, you can also use a little swipe card if I had one, but because I have the app, that's what I'm gonna use. So I simply hold my phone near the charge point, and there it goes. It's authorizing my credit card, which is stored in the app, and check that out. It clicks, and now my charger should be available like that. But immediately, we come across another issue. Because remember how I said that all these new manufacturers use a standard plug, the J1772 plug? Well, it looks like this. But unfortunately, I kinda lied to you, because Tesla, <laughs> They use their own proprietary plug, which really, really sucks. But luckily, there's a solution because included with the Model X was this little adapter. So if I plug my adapter into the Tesla, now I should be able to use this ChargePoint 1772 plug. I plug it in, it's flashing green. Now come take a look at this. If we look here on the screen, it'll actually tell us how fast we're charging and how much it's costing us. So. There you can see 0.02 kilowatts, a little smiley face letting us know we're charging. And there's our current cost. So we've charged, well, nothing right now, but there it goes, 0.003 kilowatt hours. We sped up to 1.19, 5.13 kilowatts. So now we are actually charging at a fairly decent rate. And you can see it's just plugging along. Today we're charging at 24 amps. And here in the Tesla, that means about 17 miles per hour. So every hour we gain about 16 to 17 miles of range. Where are you going to find these charge points? Well, they're kind of all over, to be honest. Cities, governments, and parks may have them put in to popular areas. In this case, we're in front of a residential complex, a big apartment complex. So this apartment complex had one installed here, but you may also find them in malls. You may find them at city centers. They're kind of all over the place. They're even as we'll go check out next in industrial areas. So you can see here on my phone, this is the charging rate just under six kilowatts. We've added almost half a kilowatt hour and it's estimated we've added about one mile to the Tesla. Now, let's say we've been here for a couple hours and we're done charging. What do we do? Well, we simply go up here and click stop and it sends a signal in theory to our little station and lets it know we're done charging. It's contacting station it says, it's working at it, and there you go. It just stopped charging 
session stop successfully. So now what I do is I simply come over here and unplug the vehicle. And you'll notice here, it'll actually give me little instructions with this cowboy dude. There it goes. And you can see it charged me eight cents. We gained half a kilowatt hour of charge in six minutes. So I simply connecting it like that and we're done. I'll get a receipt sent to my phone, letting me know how much it'll cost. But how much does it cost? Well, it depends greatly because the apartment complex or mall or whoever had the charger installed will typically set the rate. The interesting thing about these charge points is they all cost different amounts. So if I click on the one we just stopped at here, you can see that the price is 15 cents per kilowatt hour. That means to recharge the Tesla halfway would cost about $7.50. While this is super affordable, at a rate of 15 miles gained per hour, it would take about 10 hours for half a charge. Let's take a look at the one in the industrial park we're going to next, which should be down here. Now this one is actually a little different. This one is going to be $1 per hour. So sometimes it's by the amount of power, sometimes it's set per hour. And you can see we have two available, so we should be good, good to go there next. So we're here at another charge point. This one is, I kept saying industrial area. This is a business park, uh, but it's a very actually advanced business park. I'd say it's about probably three or four square miles and they have like 12 of these charge point stations. So let's see what this one charges at. Up to 6.6 .6 kilowatts, I believe. There we go. Always starts out a little bit slow and then it'll build up pretty quick. 1.6, 4.26, 5.26, 5.38, okay, so we're over five. Let's see if we can get over six. 5.75, 5.85, I think we're coming close to maxing out. A couple of things to note is that because these charge points are typically commissioned by the mall or the park or the city or the developer where they're installed, they can actually set their own rules. So for example, the first charge point we went to, it said limited to residents and guests only. Um, of course, I was neither of those and it still let me charge. They can actually even set their own hours. So you're kind of at the mercy of whoever had it installed. Overall, the charge points are actually very intuitive and surprisingly reliable. But what about some other charging companies? Now, one of my favorite applications is an app called PlugShare, and none of these companies today are actually paying us to say this. This is my honest opinion, but I want to give you guys a little bit of helpful information if you're thinking about buying an EV or if you already have one. So PlugShare is an app, kind of like a social media for outlets and charging stations in that you open it up, it looks like a Google map sort of, but there are just thousands of outlets and chargers and superchargers and Tesla superchargers and fast chargers. It's just a whole bunch of charging opportunities. And it actually brought me to this one. Now this is another company. This one's made by a company called ChargePro through uh, SEMA Connect. And this one's gonna work just a little bit differently. The cool thing about PlugShare is that in this case, it actually works with the station and I don't have to go into a separate app. So I open up my plug share app like this. Like I said, there are just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stations, but here is one of the suggestions. It's actually the one we're at right now. Gun Barrel Center Apartments, and there is a picture of the plug. You can see people have posted about their experiences. Um, Arnisha had a good experience. Uh, Drew had a good experience. So I know it should be okay. I can see it's a J1772 and the cost is $1 an hour for the first four hours and $2 an hour for the next four hours. Yeah, I'm stuck. So one of the issues with these charging stations intended for all new vehicles and not just Tesla is they're typically positioned at the front of the vehicle because a lot of um, new cars charge at the front, but Tesla's way at the back. So I'm gonna have to back in and try it again. All right, let's try charging with the Charge Pro. So same procedure, same J1772 plug. So Tesla adapter and then the plug. Now here's a challenge. There are literally dozens 
of charging companies out there and they all have their own separate apps they all have their own separate interfaces so a charge point app is not going to work on this device but plug share the app i use to find the station should so let's see if that works i've got it all plugged in let me open up my plug share here there's the station it's a little bit off in terms of location but i'll try it anyways pay with plug share my credit card information is all plugged in. So this is going to be, oh man, this is where it gets a little bit kind of unintuitive. I think this is building 14 in this complex um, and it's gonna be 14 North. So let me try activating it. Activating station, please make sure your car is plugged in. Yeah, so this is the issue. We've got one company, which is PlugShare, trying to talk to another company, giving them my credit card information to start the charging and it's all done over the internet. So. Sometimes it doesn't work as well as just going to the individual charging stations app and doing it that way. So unfortunately I couldn't get PlugShare to connect to the station and start the charging. It says timeout, credit card pre-authorization will be moved. So we're gonna try one that's just a little bit down um, this parking lot and see if we have any better luck. Okay, so round two with the Charge Pro. I think that's what it's called, yeah, Charge Pro. So far, no luck, but this is our second attempt. This one feels slightly more promising, so pay with plug share. Okay, we're plugged in. It says authorized. Ah, we're going. So second time is the charm. We have a green blinking light there. Now we, we don't have a very nice LCD display like we did on the uh, last one, the charge point, but you can see the kilowatt hours increasing and then we're charging at about 5.6 kilowatts. So that's classic level two. Level two is typically between five and six kilowatts. So the PlugShare app using the Charge Pro here did connect and we did manage to start charging the Tesla. Thus far we have showcased level two chargers and while they are increasingly popping up across the US, they are still far too slow for most who need to charge more than 15 miles of range in an hour. The solution, DC fast charging. It's now time for level three. This is called DC fast charging and level one and two are AC chargers, so alternating current. That's the current that you get out of your standard wall plug. Now these are DC or direct current chargers. On level two, we topped out about five or six kilowatts. Check this out. Level three, 50 kilowatts. Pretty wild, but there are some issues with level three charging and I'll show you what that is. So this is a company called EVgo. EVgo does fast charging and especially here in our town, they're kind of the only player for fast charging that isn't a Tesla supercharger. So to make it happen, I have to open the EVgo app. Now I'm gonna show you the different types of plugs. There's actually three unfortunately different types of DC charging plugs and they don't necessarily play with each other. So the first kind is called Chatamo. Now this is a Chatamo plug and it's completely different from the Tesla plug, it's completely different from the J1772 plug. This is a DC fast charger plug you find on something like a Nissan Leaf or maybe even something older like a Mitsubishi iMeve. These seem to be kind of going out of favor slowly. For a Tesla, you have to get a special adapter to use this Chatamo plug, and it's this big kind of beefy thing that would plug into the back of the car. I don't have one of those, unfortunately, but it is possible to charge a Tesla using this plug. However, this next one, it is not possible to use. This is called a CCS plug, and this is also a fast charge plug. However, Tesla won't sell you a CCS to Tesla adapter, which is a shame, but what's funny is that in Europe, Tesla actually uses this very plug. So unfortunately it varies based on country as well, but you'd simply plug this into the car and get up to 50 kilowatts of charging speed. In the real world, a charger like this will allow you to regain, oh, about a hundred or so miles of charge in about 30 minutes. It's similar to a supercharger, just well, if I'm being honest, quite a bit slower. And speaking of superchargers, this solution is by far the easiest and for most of us, the fastest way to recharge. That third plug I mentioned is the Tesla specific plug that only works with Tesla cars. A supercharger requires no apps or credit card. Simply plug in the Tesla and charge at speeds of two, three, even 400 miles of range gained every hour. Tesla then remotely bills your Tesla account. Super simple, but 
you're kind of out of luck unless you have a Model S, Model X, or Model 3 that will allow you to supercharge. There you have it. A quick look at different types of fast chargers. Now, let me know in the comment section below, you think you can live like this? I mean, I think it all depends on the city. A place like Boulder, charging plugs, charging stations are super prevalent. These DC fast chargers are changing the game, so I'm very excited and I'm happy to say that yes, you absolutely can. But more rural areas where EV goes or charge points or any other company is less prevalent, it might be kind of hard. You may be stuck charging at home. Here is the ultimate challenge that manufacturers face converting internal combustion customers to EVs. According to Toyota, the largest automaker in the world and a recent poll they did of customers, they discovered 34% of respondents were not positive battery electric vehicles did not have an internal combustion engine. So in other words, 34% of people they surveyed were not entirely sure whether or not EVs had a gas or diesel engine. And while many of you watching are probably car enthusiasts who are completely aware that BEV vehicles or battery electric vehicles have no gas engine and may even be willing to tolerate juggling four or five apps and potentially a charging adapter to keep your cars charged, many people like my mom and my general family just simply won't have the understanding or the bandwidth to go through this process. Go back to tflcar.com for more news, views, and real world charging reviews.